Hi friends and welcome to your practice. My name is Cole, if you haven't met me before. I'm happy to be here and going to guide you through a short 10 minute hip loving flow, some of my go-to hip poses. But before we get started, I just wanted to ask you to consider that if these classes are and have been a benefit to you, that you support us in helping keep yoga free and accessible here at Yoga TX by offering even a small donation. It really goes a long way to help us get all of this out to you and people watching all over the world. So you can find more details about that in the link below. But for today, let's give some love, give some attention to our, to our hips, yeah? And let's begin in child's pose, actually. And wide need child's pose. And as you get that back there, so go back there slow and maybe wagging your tail as you go. And wiggling in and noticing if you have any tension in the hips, if there's any freedom, what's going on in there. This will also be the legs and our thighs. Everything's all connected. But hips we tend to grip. It's very easy to hold a lot of tension there. So we'll just kind of practice on softening, releasing, and it's all a metaphor. And we often tend to grip in many places in our life. So let this be a practice even right now. Have the palms open and up. Just to practice and release. We'll be emphasizing the exhale through this practice as well. All right, three rounds of breath. Child's pose, forehead touches the ground. Get wide on an inhale. And let it all go on the exhale, twice more like that. And then slowly roll up, tabletop. Let's take a big step up with the right foot outside the hand. So lizard pose variation here. And you're just going to make some movement can press the hips back and shift forward. And I like to really take the hands off the mat and kind of walk around and I'm just exploring here. The back leg can swivel as well. Just getting like a lay of the land. I like to press the shoulder into the thigh and press the thigh back into the shoulder just to see what's going on there. And then maybe beginning to bring yourself a little bit farther down to the ground. Maybe there's like a sway in the spine, an undulation. And anywhere you can, I invite you to turn the palms up if possible. This remembrance, this uh, intentional gesture of release of openness, or at least let them be soft. And then come to square at the top of the mat and we'll walk the right foot over towards the left. And we'll take pigeon pose, and I'll give you a couple different options here. So begin to lay the leg down. No, the leg doesn't need to be parallel with the top of the mat. You can take it with the hips square. So here's the options. The hips can be square. Pulling the left hip forward, the right hip back, pressing the front shin down into the ground. You can stay up or you can come down, or you can take deer pose or sleeping swan. So we're going to roll onto the right hip. And then you'll kind of come down in a diagonal if that feels good. So find where you'd like to be. Bolsters, welcome, bring them. And just have a little bit of an explore. And see where you can soften. That's really what this is about. Often we don't know where we're holding until we realize that we've let go. One cue that I give often is, are you holding your jaw? And people come up to me after class and they were like, did you see me clenching? Like people always think I'm talking right to them. I'm like, no, it's just a common thing that we do. And our jaws and our hips are really related. I'm trying to clench both of them. So releasing your jaw. And see if you can find somewhere to rest your head, either letting it hang or like putting a head in the hand, finding a bolster for it to lie on. 
then when you feel as melty as you can, emphasize the exhale and it'll sink you even deeper. And the exhale really governs the parasympathetic. It helps us to unwind stress, whether it's physical or mental or emotional. It's the lever. The exhale governs that. The rest and relax. And then slowly coming up, and we're gonna open towards the center. And bring the top, now we will bring the top shin parallel-ish. There's no straight, there's no square right angles in our bodies like this. So make it, let it be soft. But uh, square-ish, top of the mat. Left leg on top of it, double pigeon. So great place for some bolsters or a block in between. Some people's knee will come down here. Uh, mine doesn't. Um, and you may be more like this. You can extend the bottom leg as well. So finding where you'd like to be. This is called double pigeon. And what can be helpful is to bring the booty out a little bit. That helps us set the pelvis forward. Some more options for you. This is a big, this is the big kahuna. You can fold forward. That's a lot in my body, so I normally don't. I, get, I let gravity do its thing right here. This is good. But you can also take a twist if you'd like to add a twist on. For different options. Or maybe just resting palm up. Gesture of allowance. Of release. Where in your body can you soften? Where in your life do you have room to soften? To let go of the tendency to grip. It's a very human tendency. We're together in that. About three more rounds of breath here. Maybe leaning forward just slightly more. Or imagining you can stick the booty out a little bit. You can press down through everything touching the ground in order to lengthen the spine up like you're getting a little bit longer. And then release by leaning back. You can plant the hands, soles of the feet on the ground and just wave side to side. And then find your way back into tabletop. Wiggle it out, make any movements that you'd like. And then let's take a big step up, left foot outside of the left hand. And then same thing here, but not actually the same thing. So same kind of context, but you can do something different on this side. You're ex 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 bleh, an explorative lizard, a curious lizard. Maybe the left arm like reaches under the left leg. Maybe the forehead comes down. And seeing what's possible. Feeling nooks and crannies. Swinging the hips, wagging the tail. And then we're coming into pigeon pose. So bring left foot over to the left side of the mat. And then find your way, take your pick. You can also always come into recline pigeon here as well on the back. So taking square hip pigeon if you'd like. So scissoring the thighs, and by that I mean pulling the back uh, hip crease forward as the top one comes back. Press down through the front shin and lift the front sheath of the body. It'll be a powerful pose. I think too powerful for me today. <laughs> Somebody come into, to, into uh, more of the sleeping swan, more the yin version. So same thing here, feel in, take time to find yourself and where you'd like to be and then stay for a while. 
where you can release. Can you let the hips, sometimes I like to have this visualization of like ice to water, water to vapor. It helps me unwind. See if you can soften the shoulders and the jaw and find somewhere to rest the head. <sighs> rest. Rest is hard to find in such a productive culture. Oh my goodness. Something I'm definitely working on. I'm feel, feeling like I fill my, my extra space with something productive. Like, oh, I, I have a little bit of time. I could do this. I could do that. It's so interesting. I'm creating the pattern of not softening and of always pushing forward. So working on unwinding and recalibrating that pattern into, yeah, the ability to soften. Mm. These long kind of hold poses really support that. Nowhere to go, nothing to manage. And slowly, hands find the earth, press down to lift up, and we take double pigeon. So shift yourself around. Front shin comes parallel-ish. The other one wraps around. One thing I didn't say on the other side, a cue I like to give is that this top leg, see the foot often wants to kind of sickle in, turn in like this. Just, I think it's nice if we move it over a little bit. So kind of the gauge is like, could I like slide on a flip flop, slide on a shoe right there? You'll notice in my body how different it is on this side. We're not even on both sides. So likely you'll be very different. We'll wiggle around, find where you'd like to be and let's stay for a bit. Breathe, emphasize your exhale. Maybe hands in a gesture of release. Heart open, palms open, breath fluid. Nothing to do, nothing to fix, nothing to manage. Just steady, fluid breath staying with you. Drink in and release. Kind of slide back on the hips, hands find the ground, feet find the ground, and wipe side to side, windshield wipers. Let's take Baddha Konasana to close it off. This is just a nice little sequence when you just have a little bit of time. It doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be a, big, a big rendezvous. Can just be a few attention filled, breath filled moments to ha have a little bit of a, a refresh, a reset. So press down through the sit bones, reach through the spine, crown of the head, and then fold forward. And you can fold with length if you'd like, pulling the heart towards the feet, or you could fold really curled in more yin style and just let yourself round. Let yourself hang, let the arms, the hands find an open gesture. Maybe there's a little sway or maybe there's stillness, whatever you choose, just be here for it, be here with it. We've got six rounds of breath. Slowly coming up. And one last pose, because I like this transition. 
bring the knees in. You can bring the feet wide. Arms reach in between the shoulders. And then take your peace fingers and grab either around the big toe, or you can grab for the outside of the feet. And we're gonna roll down into happy baby. So you can kind of walk your feet towards you and take the chin to the chest and round the back. Round the back and you're gonna roll down. And the legs will open up. <laughs> I don't know why that's so fun for me. Happy baby. And you can take this really lazy baby here or you can take it more active and press the low back down or press the sacrum down, lift the low back up, kick into the hands at the same time the hands pull down. This will be more active. Your choice, do you. Just a few rounds of breath. And bring the knees together and rock up and down a few times. And we'll close out in the seat. The few rounds of breath in Sukhasana, good space pose. Palms up. Big inhale. Audible out breath. Again, inhale, breathe it in. Let something go with this one. Once more, in. Let it go. And close however you like, maybe pouring forward, maybe a hand to the heart, hand to the belly, just thanking yourself for being here. And choosing your own way to tie a bow on this practice. Mm, and thank you for your time. Thank you for trusting me. I hope that you found some benefit here. And if you want to learn more about me and things I have going on, I've got lots of retreats coming up, Thailand, Spain, um, and some teacher trainings, 300 hour, 200 hour teacher training in Bali um, coming up as well. And you can learn more about that in the links in the description. And I'd love to practice with you live and explore the endless path of curiosity this yoga practice is. And it's so much, so much more than just the movement and the breath. We go into lots of different angles and textures and really take it from the mat out into the world. So, yeah, it's a beautiful practice, lifelong. I, yeah, happy to be part of your practice. I'll see you next time on your mat, and thank you for us here at Yoga TX. Have a beautiful day.